Welcome back. This is module number 10 on capitalization. And some students have difficulties in figuring out when to capitalize certain letters of certain words um, in titles as well as in sentences. So hopefully this module on capitalization will help you eliminate those, type of, those types of errors in your actual academic formal writing. So once again, this is module number 10 in, on capitalization of words and sentences as well as words and titles of articles, essays, books, etc. Now there are 11 rules for capitalization and we're going to I'm going to give you examples of, of of all of those 11 rules for those capitalization errors. Rule number 1, you need to capitalize the first word that begins every sentence including direct quotes that are complete sentences. And I have three examples for you. Um, to look at for this rule number one and if you notice the letter that's underlined and also in bold are what you need to capitalize. Example number one says some people love to complain about everything. The S in some is capitalized because some is the first word of the sentence. Example number two, does Richard work during the summer? We have a question here it begins with the word does therefore the D is capitalized because it begins the, the actual question. And then I also have in example number three um, a direct quote. Laura asked, quote, will someone be home when I get off of work, end quote. Now this quotation, which is will someone be home when I get off of work, is a complete sentence, it's actually a question. So I automatically have to capitalize the first letter of the first word in that question, which is the direct quote, the W in will. Now our second capitalization rule is you need to capitalize the first and last words in the title automatically and all other words in the title need to be capitalized except articles which are a, and, and the and also the unimportant words like prepositions. So those words if they come between the first word and the last word of the title do not need to be capitalized. And again the words a, and, and the are what's called articles. Let's look at our first example here. One of my favorite authors is Toni Morrison, who wrote The Bluest Eye. The Bluest Eye is the, the title of the novel written by Toni Morrison. I capitalize automatically the first letter of the first word, the T and the, the first letter of the last word in the title, the E and I, and bluest is a major word in the title, and it comes between the first and last word, so I must capitalize the B in bluest as well. Then our second example, we have Colby hates the catcher in the rye. We have a title of, of a famous work here. The first letter of the first word, the, must be capitalized. It's not one of the words that's in the middle of the sentence of the, the actual title. The last word, the first letter of the last word, is um, R in rye, so of course you automatically capitalize that word. Now we have another major word in between the first and last word, which is catcher. And I'm capitalizing the C in catcher. And if you notice the word in, I-N, um, that's a preposition, so that's an unimportant word, so that word is not capitalized. And the word the, um, which is the second the in the, the title, is an unimportant word as well, and it's also not capitalized. Our third capitalization rule is you need to capitalize the titles of relatives and professions when they precede or come before the person's name or when they are used to address the person. I have two examples here. We knew that Professor Gilbert was also in a rock band. Because I'm, I'm adding the title to Gilbert's name and it comes before his last name, I need to capitalize the P in Professor. And of course, Gilbert is a proper noun, so I automatically capitalize the G in Gilbert because that's someone's name. Then my next example, happy birthday, Uncle Leroy. I'm addressing Leroy, and of course, that's a proper noun, so the L in Leroy is automatically capitalized. And because I have his title and I'm addressing him specifically, I have to um, capitalize the U in uncle. Now my fourth capitalization rule is you need to capitalize official titles of honor and respect 
when they precede or come before personal nouns, personal names, excuse me. My example here is First Lieutenant Gibbs. Now you do have an official title for Gibbs and that's First Lieutenant. So the F in First must be capitalized and the L in Lieutenant must also be capitalized. Then my second example, Congressman Smith. I have a title, an official title which is Congressman. It comes before the person's name which is Smith. So I need to capitalize that C in Congressman. Then my fifth capitalization rule is you need to capitalize the names of people, political, religious, and ethnic groups, as well as languages and nationalities. And I have a couple of examples here. Asians, that's a, a, a major group, a nationality, so I have A for Asians capitalized. Um, another example is Catholics, that's a religious group, so I have the C capitalized. And then I have another example of an ethnic group, Kenyan, and the K is also capitalized. Then my sixth capitalization rule is you need to capitalize the names of streets, buildings, rivers, cities, states, nations, geographical features, and schools and other institutions. And of course I have some examples here, Mississippi River, the M is capitalized as well as the R, New York City, name of a city, the N in New is capitalized, the Y in York, and the C in City. Hawaii, the H is capitalized, that's a state, again, proper noun. Yellowstone National Park, this is a geographical feature, so I'm capitalizing the Y in Yellowstone, the N in National, and the P in Park. Africa is a country, so I'm capitalizing the A in Africa. And Rodeo Drive, of course, is a street name, and I'm capitalizing the R in Rodeo and the D in Drive. And my seventh capitalization rule, capitalize the directions when they refer to specific regions or if they are a part of a proper name. So I have some examples. North Carolina is an actual state, a specific region. The N is capitalized in North. The C is capitalized in Carolina. Now I'm, I'm, for the next example, I'm making reference to an actual specific region, the West Coast. The W and C are both capitalized. Friends from the north, I have a geographical location when I mention north, so the N is capitalized. And winds from the east, another geographical um, region, so the E is capitalized in east. Now my eighth capitalization rule, you need to capitalize the days of the week, months of the year, and names of holidays and religious seasons. And I have a few examples here for you as well. Um, the M in Monday is capitalized, the S in February, an, a an actual month, a national or uh, a holiday is capitalized in Thanksgiving with the T, and Kwanzaa, another holiday, is also capitalized with that K. Our ninth capitalization rule, you need to capitalize the names of particular historical events, errors, and special events. Have some examples here, the B um, in for black, Friday is capitalized as well as the F. The Harlem Renaissance. Uh, Harlem Renaissance is a historical event. It's an actual error. The H is capitalized and the R is capitalized. The disco error is an actual um, error in history. The D is capitalized in disco and the E is capitalized in error. In the Middle Ages, we have the um, historical error. The M is capitalized and the A is capitalized. And our 10th capitalization rule is capitalize the names of school subjects only if they are proper nouns or if they are followed by a, co a course number. I have some examples here like Spanish 101. Of course, you capitalize the S in Spanish. You have a course number with it, 101, so the S is automatically capitalized. Italian for tourists, I is capitalized for Italian. Economics. We, it's a course, but you don't have a number behind it, so the E is lowercase. Now, if you look at the fourth example, when you have Economics 101, now I have a course number with the actual course title. So, of course, at this point, I have to capitalize the E in Economics. Then my last capitalization um, rule is capitalize all references to a supreme being. My example, first example is God. He's the, the Christian God. That's why the G is capitalized. Not the pagan gods, where there's a belief in many gods. That G 
in this case would be lowercase, but the one Christian God is G capitalized. Allah, the A is capitalized, that's the supreme um, being. The Lord, the L in Lord is capitalized. Holy Spirit, the H in Holy is capitalized, as well as the S in Spirit. And Buddha, the B is capitalized for Buddha. It's important for me to note that, yes, these were the 11 capitalization rules, the general rules, but another, um, another rule that's kind of a common sense rule is that, of course, you're going to capitalize proper nouns, like someone's name or an actual marketing company or something like that. So keep that in mind as well, that you will capitalize proper nouns or proper names. So there you have it. You have the 11 capitalization rules so that you won't make those mistakes in your actual academic writing.